But, like, when I get in these types of moods, like, so I don't freak out. Like, so I don't, like, go nuts. <laughs> so I don't fucking start, like, motherfucking the world. Uh -huh. And I'm now very direct mm -hmm. and very simplistic and I have a tone that is like you know I'm you know I want to freak out but I'm not going to freak out I'm just going to be very simplistic I'm going to be very direct and you're not going to like it it's it may be equally as bad as the freak out it might be worse it actually than, might be worse because yeah. you know inside I'm boiling and I'm like mm -mm, <laughs> not going to do it Yeah, that, yeah. I don't know what to do about it. I mean, I don't think there's much we can do about it. No, it's it's not coming from a bad place. No. It's coming from a direct place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> well, you look great today. You like me in the rain jacket? I love you in the rain jacket. I love this rain I jacket. I love that it fits you fucking splendidly. You know... How much I hate certain pieces of apparel. Uh -huh. Like, hate them. Rain jacket's one of them. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons you're like, hey, what do you think of doing a rain jacket? And I'm like, I think you're a fucking cunt. That's what I think. <laughs> At least I can I can say those things to you. And you're uh -huh. like, oh, okay, dickhead. Yep. And because uh, you wanted to do a rain jacket. Like, because we did one that was like, it was like kind of rain resistant. <sighs> yeah, it was more of like a windbreaker. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the rain in in the grand scheme of things yeah and then you were like i really want to do a rain jacket and that's whenever i was like you brought up the other thing that didn't do it was a windbreaker it was cool thin mm -hmm. and then you're like i want to do a rain jacket i'm like bob i'm not going to be able to move in a rain jacket they have no stretch if things have no stretch stretch seth doesn't like them it's like a given and then you're like i think we can do it and i'm like okay good luck and then the prototype came in and it was still a little tight yeah and you were like, oh, I'm going to make this work. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I knew you were wrong because it didn't fit me the way I wanted it to fit. <laughs> it did not. And then I gained 10 pounds. And then the extra large came in. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Gain 10 pounds. It's definitely not going to fit. I put it on and I'm like, oh, it's, it's awesome. It fits. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah. It is like, uh, it is such a cool, old school, yet kind of trendy rain jacket yeah it actually works mm -hmm. like we were outside in the rain for 30 minutes yesterday shooting content whole time dry i was so nervous i mean oh, yeah, I was, dude. dude i was so nervous i'm like i really hope because dude when we shot the last one i, yeah. re I remember the shoot yeah and like in in our heads it was a rain jacket but it was definitely more of a windbreaker looking back and when we were shooting it I remember we were getting the shots in the rain. Jay loved the photo he got of the rain mm -hmm. droplets drop. And you're like, my shoulders are soaked right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> dude, because it was raining out. And it yeah. was there. Yesterday, it was fucking pouring. And I'm like, hey. I'm like, man, is this, am I going to get wet? Bro, not at all. Yep. It was wild. Yeah. It is. This is a phenomenal piece of apparel. And I fought the whole entire time. You did. And absolute fire. I like the zipper and the Velcro. I like the old school vibe of the starter jacket with the kangaroo pocket. Yeah, super cool. But then still has the side pockets. So yep. like when you go to for reach the hands, for them. And they meet in the middle. Yep. Yep. Got the stretchy things on the side so you can open it up or you can make it tight around the waist. Mm -hmm. Really good job. Thank you. Thank you. For anybody that doesn't know, Bob tells me I look good in things so that that way I like them even more than I actually should. <laughs> Look good in the hat, Seth. Thanks, Bob. No, I don't. It's a fucking corduroy hat. I do not look good in corduroy hats. I think you do. Well, fuck you. It doesn't matter. I thought it did. It looked really nice on you. So the corduroy hat thing is a big deal. We have a corduroy hat dropping as well. Mm -hmm. Big deal. I was not like, you're like corduroy hat. And I'm, I started seeing Nick wearing them. I saw people They're on everywhere. the internet wearing them. I'm like, oh, dude, corduroy hats are a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what, what, what is this face going to do with the corduroy hat? <laughs> I could wear corduroy pants like around the holidays, like brown corduroys with a sweater, you know, or a sweater vest. Uh -huh. Yeah, I could pull that off. A corduroy hat? I don't know. It's a pretty cool hat. All the kids love them. You, you the know, adults, it's nostalgic. Yep. They're, they're cool. It, it, it is. It was, I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. I will say that, again, 
The hat that I'm wearing is my favorite hat of the release. I knew it was going to be. I thought, so I don't say things because, you know, I've been wrong a time or two, a dozen or two times Mm -hmm. over the years. And this was one of those things that I'm like, this hat's going to look so weird in person. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, that is an odd looking hat. But the more I wore it and how it goes with a lot of even the old stuff that we've done. Yeah. I'm like, hey. This fucking hat's sick. It's such a neutral gray, but still tan front. And then that, that highlight of that red. It might, this is, so this is the, you know, the thick boy shirt we did, the thick shirt yeah. with the patch. Mm-hmm. It matches that. Mm-hmm. It matches the uh, stringer that we did. And I'm like, hey, really cool hat. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like it. Solid embroidery on that. Top notch shit. Yeah. But it's been good. So. Mr. Bob, you have completed your ninth Iron Man? Yeah, it's my eighth, eighth 70.3. Eighth, eighth 70.3. And I got three full distances mm. under my belt. Oh, bitch. Yep. 11 Iron Man. 11 Iron Mans. Three full, eight fucking halves. Yep. And three years? In three years. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, like, it's not even three years. Like, this November will be three years. No way. Yeah. Because, no way. Yeah, because the first one was in November. Of 2021. Uh, mm-hmm. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I didn't even realize, I looked back on last year, I did I did four 70.3s last year. Oh, boy. No one fucking does that. No. So, I was just going to say, the whole reason I'm bringing it up is, everybody remembers whenever you did your first one, and we did the podcast, and the whole experience, and the talk, and I'm like, man... You do an Iron Man, it's pretty crazy. And then you're like, I did another one. And another one. Uh-huh. And then you became DJ Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> another one. <laughs> but it's uh, uh, eight halves and three fools. Like, people that do, I'm bringing this up because it's just you now. Now I'm like, oh, Bob's going to do another Iron Man. Nice. You just PR'd. Yeah. Best 70.3 mm-hmm. you've had yet. Yep. Um. And but you, you it's just become kind of like your 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 life. Mm-hmm. You kind of dove face first into this one, huh? Yeah, I yeah fully. Yeah, hundred well, percent. I've never been so committed to something in my life. Absolutely not. Yeah, I've never seen you so committed to something in your life other than work. Yep. And like, I say this because whenever you go on Instagram and people have things in their bios, mm-hmm. you know, and they're. Not exaggerations in bios, but usually like accolades mm-hmm. and things like that. And, you know, people joke about certain things, you know. And, uh, but if you see somebody that has like, if they do triathlons, they'll have like completed three Ironmans. And it's like, whoa, dude. Yeah. You complete three Ironmans. You're, you, you've done, you've been a bad motherfucker at least three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least three times. Mm-hmm. And then we're sitting here going, Oh, yeah, so did my 11th, you know, competition in Ironman. I, I really like the halves. Oh, 70.3, huh? Yeah, it's it's funner for me because I'm able to apply more pressure and apply more intensity to it rather than the distance and the endurance of the the 140.6. Right. It's like, oh, oh, so you like it a little faster and a little more intense. Yeah, I really like, you know, pushing myself redlining for longer because in the in the full, you don't redline for as long. It's, you know, it's a distance game. Yes. And it, it's three marathons in one instead of just, you know, 70.3 miles. Yeah. And I just kind of, I just find it like, I'm like, oh, no, Bob does Iron Man. So I'm like, oh, nice. Yeah, he's done 11. Mm-hmm. You should put that in your bio. Yeah. I, I actually did add it. Did I you? finally added it. Because I, I was adding them up. I'm like, I was like, I, I don't even know how many I'm at. And then I added them up. I'm like. I'm putting this in there. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been talking about it, and I'm yeah. bringing it up now. But it's like, uh, it's like, because I'm like, dude, that's a fucking lot. Mm-hmm. Like, because there's people that you'd consider like some bad motherfuckers. Yeah. That do them, and they're like, yeah, I did three Ironman. You're like, whoa, how was your times? And then they'll tell their times, and I'm like, oh, Bob did better than that. Hmm. Oh, okay, <laughs> unique. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and it and it's so the experience of this one. Yeah. This was, um, like, I left this race feeling, like, extremely fulfilled. Nice. Like, ve- like super proud. Mm. And, you know, it's, <clears throat> a lot of people say, like, well, how can you not, not be proud of it just in general? Well, I'm not just going out just to finish. Like, I, I'm going out to be competitive, and I spend a lot of time on it. The training is intense. It's 
15 to 20 hours a week on top of what we do here. And when I don't have a showing that I was expecting, I mean, it, it sucks. Like it, it's shitty because you, you devoted so much effort to it. Um, this is probably one of the first times, like I felt like a hundred percent fulfilled and my, my tank was completely fucking empty at the end, completely empty. Um, I went 438, which my, my long-term goal is to hit 430 or go that four sub 430 mark. Um, Augusta was my second fastest race that I did last year, and that was a downriver swim. So it should have been my fastest. So to go faster than Augusta um, at this race with just a standard swim, like super fucking pumped about it. So uh, it's hard because people like the the timing plays mm -hmm. a, where you do it plays a role. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like you were down you in Augusta, you were down river, so the swim might have been way faster. Dude, it was six minutes faster. Oh bitch. Yeah. So people might not understand this because you're like, oh, I'm at four thirty eight mm -hmm. and I want to hit a sub four thirty. Yeah. It's only eight minutes. Yeah. You know, shave a minute or two off your swim and a couple minutes off the bike and a couple off the run. You can do that. But in the grand scheme of things, how difficult is something like that to do? Oh my god. I mean to, to shave one minute off of a half marathon time, I mean, I, I think about it. That's five to ten seconds faster over several miles. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's a lot that over a five hour five hour span. Um, so if you do like if you're saying like in a half marathon, 13, 13 miles, thirteen point one miles. Okay, yeah. so if you shave off five seconds each mile, mm -hmm. it's like a minute total. Yeah. Right. So if you're running 755s, mm -hmm. averaging 755s for 13 straight miles, mm -hmm. and you need to average 750s, right? It's a whole different ball game. Whole different ball game. And like what <clears throat> what we do in training too, which uh, showed in this race. So like my average run pace on the run was like a 730, 735. That was my average. But if you break it down, like I was walking every aid station to get in as much nutrition as possible because I was dead. Like I was down. That's the other thing. Yeah, you got to make sure that you're not <clears throat> fucking. But aid station to aid station, I was running 650, like consistently. Oh, really? I was running 650s the entire race. And that that's the most consistent I've I've been on the run um, in three years. Oh, that is wild you're running that fast. Yeah. So for anybody that doesn't know, or you meatheads out there, mm -hmm. If you're running a six minute mile, you're running at 10 miles an hour. Yes. Yep. <laughs> you know how fast that is? Dude, it's fast. That's fucking fast. It's fast. I run it, uh, if I run at seven miles an hour for two miles, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you're literally hanging on the edge for the, for the entire duration of, of this distance. Yeah, that, and that's the difference between a seventy point three and a mm -hmm. and a and a four is like you're yeah. trying to redline yourself a little further and faster. Yeah, for that this that thirteen or that how long's the bike? Uh, fifty six miles. Fifty six miles. Yeah, and then you r swim one point two miles. Swim one point two, bike fifty six, run thirteen point one. Yep, and that took you four hours and thirty eight minutes. Yep, it's crazy because me, like. It was me, SJ, and Jay shooting content on that Sunday. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and Bob's getting started. And then here comes, like, 12 p.m. comes around for us. And it's like, oh, Bob's got an hour left. It's like, holy fuck, we had a whole entire morning. Yeah. And, like, the entire time, you have not stopped pushing yourself. Not stopped. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, we had a snack. We sat down. We ate an apple. I think about snacks when I'm out there. I would too. I do. <laughs> because you also do this with no music. Yeah, no music. Not talking to anyone. Nope. Just in your head. In your fucking head. Living it up. Yeah. Loving life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of change in mindset out there. Yeah, I would there's imagine so. Yeah. Do you think about quitting? That never that's never come in that's that thought's never crossed my mind. Really? Like, just like, oh, I'm done. Like, I'm walking off the course. Never. Yeah. Not one time. Do people do that? Do you see yeah. people do it? Yeah. Really? Sure. Mm -hmm. I Because I, it's in my head. I'm like, dude, there'd be a point when I'd be like, fuck this shit. I'm out. Yeah. But then it's like, then that means you didn't do the training. Yeah. The train, if you're going to do an Ironman, you have to train for it. Motherfuckers will die out there. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen people die out there. Yeah. They keep that on a hush hush. They do. You know what I mean? Like how bodybuilding, like if a fucking bodybuilder dies, it's like everybody's coming at him and he's like, look at these stupid fuckers killing themselves from the gear. Mm -hmm. And like, it's all over everything. TMZ's picking it up, this and that. At almost every Iron Man, someone dies. Yeah, yeah, and it's always it's always a different cause. I mean, sometimes it's in the water, sometimes like a bike crash, or like because a lot of times you're on these bike courses, they're not completely closed. Like you're you're with traffic. Get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, you're with cars, dude. Holy smokes! Like uh, uh, cones are might be separating you from normal Holy traffic. Fuck. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, and then um, heat, dude. Heat. Yeah, heat, heat exhaustion. Yep. And, and the nutrition. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of crazy that, like, whenever you're looking at triathletes, you're like, look how healthy all these people are. Mm -hmm. it, but it's, at the same time, it's also an extreme fucking sport. Oh, yeah, dude. Hey, let's get in the water and swim a half a mile out and swim a half a mile back. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you're in the fucking ocean. Yep. It's really choppy out there. If you didn't train, you might die, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's way different than the pool. It's not like the pool. And it's, it's crazy. Cause, uh, like, like I was saying, like in, in, uh, in bodybuilding, it's like you dumb fuckers taking all that gear. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we know it, <laughs> but at the same time, we're like, okay, so these iron men people aren't taking gear. Yeah. And every single year someone dies from doing uh, almost every event. Yeah. I'd probably say what, like every third event or yeah. somebody that dies. Yeah. Yep. At least. That's fucking insane. At least, it, and it and it sucks when um when you're out on course and like you hear and see the ambulances. Oh yeah. Like I I was coming back in on the bike and one was zooming out and I'm like fuck. Really, while you were there to yeah. this year at yeah. Galveston. Yep. Oh shit. Yep. Saw saw a guy get hit um at World Championships. Uh no, that was Augusta. Saw someone get clipped at Augusta. Holy. There's a fuck. big descend on a on a public road and there was a gas station. And some dude came right out and fucking smashed guy, into him. Yeah, he died. He was just unconscious on the road. Oh. Like I saw the whole thing. Holy fuck! Fucking yeah, it's shitty. It's wild. Yep. Man. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's but it but it's 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 the reality of it. It is like it, it, it's not. Um, you got to expect those things to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there's there's risk involved with everything. Mm -hmm. But I just it's. I mean, I've probably heard we had some shit happen in bodybuilding, and it always is, and mm -hmm. everybody knows I'm outspoken about it. I'm like, yes, this is a reality. Yeah. It is. But at the same thing, like, like whenever you see a surfer get attacked by a fucking shark, you're like, yeah, you stupid fuck. Yeah, you're Who do you think you're in there with? You look like a seal. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> whenever you're doing an Ironman, it's like, hey, you got swimming in the ocean with the fishies, and all the shit, and then some choppy water, like, mm -hmm. the fishies ain't going to get you. The water's going to drown you, your ass, and you're going to fucking die. Yeah. That's real. Very. And and it's like that in so many in, in intense extreme sports, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, people live their life the way they want to. Yeah, that's mm. right. People, people always got something to say. The internet always has something to say. Always. It doesn't even matter if you have like a feel good thing on the internet. I saw some nice stuff on the internet last night, and there's still fucking dickheads in the comments. And I'm like, man, what's Bro, going on? The, the the energy it takes. It it's like I'm like, are you this big of a bag of shit? Like, are you are you like that's you really? Like, man, what, how bad's your life suck? I know. I think that every time. Every time. Because bad things in time, like whenever you're going through something, whenever mm -hmm. you're going through like something tough in life, like it'll fuck with you. Mm -hmm. It'll make you do crazy things. Like, like I was thinking, um, like whenever, like if you find out your significant other has been fucking someone else, like you're not going to come out and tell the world, hey, my girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife is fucking my best friend or fucking someone else. You're not going to do that. Mm -mm. Like, you don't know what's going on in other people's lives. Right. So, like, you don't know how they're responding. And it's like, the guy who commented that might have just found out that his wife was sucking another dude's dick and they got three kids together. Yeah. And he's just mad as fuck at everything. And it's like, so, and, and <laughs> again, <laughs> that is a reality of today. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, fuck me, dude. You don't know how mm -hmm. people were like what's going on in their personal life. But it's like, that doesn't just give you the right to fucking berate other people. It's like, maybe you should stay off the internet. 
Yeah. Makes you kind of like take a look at what's going on in your life and hone in on, on you. And, mm -hmm. but then again, it's like, dude, those types of scenarios do crazy things to people. Yeah. Even if you lost your job or you had, a, you had something go wrong in life or like anything, dude. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, we've talked about this before and I've, I've, I've DM'd people directly saying those types of things like, Hey, like, are you okay? Like, do you need to talk about something? Is something going on? And there was a few people that like actually opened up about things, but then there's equal amount of people that are like, start. They're like, no, fuck you. Dick yeah, I think you're a piece they of keep shit. Talking shit. I'm like, man, I'm like, I thought I was putting my hand out. Like, let's just like, fuck it. We're not on public. Like this isn't in the comments. This is behind closed doors and you're still a fucking asshole. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it it'll never, it, again, it's just, it's wild. Mm -hmm. It's wild because I don't know, dude. I would just never. I would never talk shit, even on things I fucking can't stand. Like I would I, never talk shit. I like being a smartass. Okay? Yeah, like to like things I know are in the industry. Mm -hmm. Like I was fucking around with the one bodybuilding page. Like these people were busting balls about like supplements and how fucking like oh uh, they're, they're not supplement people. I'm like, I've been a supplement guy since I was fucking 16 years old. Yeah, I like them. I just enjoy them. I've spent my money on them. I've been sponsored by them. I've seen good ones, bad ones, been a part of good ones, been a part of bad ones. And now I have my own. Like, I like pre-workout and protein and like, cool shit. I love amino acids. I got them right here. They're delicious. Like, there's some people that just aren't supplement people. And they're like, it's all fucking snake oil. You <laughs> cocksuckers are just trying to take my money. I'm like, do you know the, that money makes the world turn? Right. Like, do you, like, you know, you have a job that you probably go to a job nine to five and literally half ass it because you know you're getting a paycheck for all eight hours. But since it's Friday, you're only going to work six or four or two just to be a dick because you hate the fucking man, but you're too lazy to actually go out and do something yourself. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, just like, man, what the fuck is going on? Like we, I love supplements. Mm -hmm. I've always loved them. I've always talked about them. Do you know that food is king? And will always be king. If you don't drink your drink your water and eat your food, supplements mean fuck all. Do not if you, work. If you train like a fucking cunt, you're not going to get fucking nowhere, whether you take steroids or not. Just so happens for me, I love supplements. I like food. I drink my fluids. And I like sauce, motherfucker. And I love to beat the ever-loving fuck out of myself. You put, and I got pretty decent genetics. You put them all together, you get a pro bodybuilder. Yep. That's how it works. And I just kind of look at all these people and I'm like, man, like, I guess fuck you or like good luck because I know one thing, like I will fucking eat you in every aspect of life. All of them. I'm going to fuck you up in all of them because I like work. Like I like it. Like I think work is fun. It's fun. I have a good time. You obviously do too. I fucking love it, dude. Because it's like you can't do Iron Man's that many of them and not like the work. Like the work is the fun. The fun is the work. That that is the fun. The training's the fun part. I like really hard shit. Yep. I like swinging an axe. Mm -hmm. I used to hate it when I was younger because it sucked and it was hard. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I just kept doing it: sledgehammer, axe, waking up at five thirty, going to work. You know, all this manual labor shit. And now I'm like, I fucking love it. This is my free time. It opens up my mind. I worked all day Sunday in the yard, and I'm like, I fucking forgot how much I like this shit. It's crazy, but I guess people don't really understand those things, and they like to talk shit, or they just like to say something about anything. Yeah. I got a DM yesterday, too, about uh, we're going up to the Detroit Pro. Yeah. We're the platinum sponsor of the Detroit Pro with uh, Hostile and, and, and Fuad. Uh, they talk a huge game on their on their podcast. Mm -hmm. So years ago, Fuad and the, and the guys on there were bitching about backdrops. Because whenever you go to like a big event, the backdrops are illuminated. Like on stage? On stage. Like if you're on stage and all the bodybuilders are all shredded and looking great, the lighting will suck. And the backdrop is is like TVs and illuminated. So the 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 the... the Physiques don't look as good on stage because they got all this fucking bullshit happening. They don't pop like. Yeah, like old school, like Night of Champions. The Night of Champions is like, you know, that was the third biggest show in the country mm -hmm. or in the world. And it was like, it was like iconic. Like, 
black backdrops. The oh. fucking lighting was perfect. So just, the physique was what stood off on stage. Man, I didn't know this was like a thing. Oh, it was a big topic years ago on the podcast. Yeah. And Fuad was, and he's an outspoken dickhead. Uh -huh. So then he's talking a massive game about, you know, if I did a show, we'd fucking do black backdrops. So Fuad finally put his money where his mouth was, putting on a show this weekend. There's no sponsors in the background. Mm. Zero. And, uh, but they're going to have a TV up there, like up above them in the theater with all the sponsors up above, but it's not going to do anything. So it's not going to be like in everyone's face. It's going to be there. You're going to fucking see it. But he said this and I'm like, I was like, he was talking about sponsors. I'm like, sign me up, dude. We sponsor a few shows a year. Sign me up. I want to be a part of it because if it works, fucking right. If it doesn't, that's okay. We're friends. We can keep doing cool shit together and I'll keep supporting. We'll find something else and anyone else to help so this weekend's the detroit pro and they have quite the they did like a mini expo it's this really cool fucking theater it's in detroit twenty five thousand dollars to the first place winner in the open Ooh. it's usually 10 yeah 25 to the winner uh that company uprising in mid 45 with mark and guy and ryan the guys from mid 45 and uprising yeah um they helped in uh, with whole IFBB to increase prize money. And this is one of the shows that went from a $10,000 first place win to a $25,000 first Fuck place Fuck yeah, win. pay these athletes. And then Fuad, super cool. And then Fuad, uh, with all the sponsorships and everything he's gathering, he said that he's going to give away uh, the most muscular award, the best conditioned award, and the best poser award, $2,500 to each in those categories, Cedric McMillan, John Meadows, and Luke Sandow. All of them have passed, and all of them have, and, you know, Fuad was friends with all three of them. Yeah. So he's doing that. And I'm like, bro, this is awesome. Like, put together a mini expo. It's Sam Sulik, I can't wait to see that young kid, and I'll bring him chocolate milk like 3,000 other people do. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, but then, like, uh, every the whole the whole hostile crew, uh, Hunter LeBrod is going, I'm going to go, Mike is Rattel. Like, it's going to be a really cool experience. And uh, super excited. But young Aiden told me that a lot of the Sam Sulik fans and some of the people were bitching that Fuad is charging for the expo. Mm. Like, it's $50 for the expo and the show. Because it's an event. For the expo and the show? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so then, and he's saying people are bitching. I'm like, it's, it's, you know that you don't go into the Pittsburgh for free. Right. To go to the Pittsburgh and see the best guest posers in the fucking world, yeah. all in one spot. There's going to be eight fucking people at the Pittsburgh guest posing. Pretty sure it's not free to get the fuck in the door, bud. No. And these people, I got a message saying, I thought you were a man of the people, Seth. I thought you were a man of the people. Like, I can't believe you're charging to meet you. And I'm like, hey, hold the fuck on. What is going on right now? Do you stupid motherfuckers not understand that you have to pay for these types of things to occur? Yeah. Like, it's not just me you're meeting at a store that supports Axe and Sledge. The store spends a lot of money on Axe and Sledge products, and then they put on the event, and I show up for free. But it's not free to the store. They're a big supporter of the company. Mm -hmm. I don't charge the store five grand to show up. I say, be a good customer. Let's do this. These are the numbers that we want to we want to hit. We want to do all these things. It's a back end negotiation. Mm -hmm. Then everybody. That's why we travel because that's why we go to the stores that we do. They're huge supporters, and you people support those stores, and that's why I show up. Like, but it's like, how the fuck do you not understand that that's how the world works? In order to have the venue, the conference center, the theater, it's not free. No, the fucking booths, the the flooring, the, the just to rent the space. Rent the, the space. Printing banners, printing the promo shit. Dude, it, and now, now with how things, dude, how things are priced now, it's so fucking expensive to put any type of event on. That's what I'm saying. I'm kind of like, hey, if you got Sam Sulik, literally the biggest thing in the fitness industry right now, mm -hmm. like everybody knows who he is. And he's just some young kid that doesn't give a fuck about money. He just likes doing his shit. Mm -hmm. Like, he turned down multi-million dollar apparel deal. Mm -hmm. 
I, I asked the guys, I was like, hey, is this real? And they're like, yeah, Sam turned it down. I was like, God, it's nuts. He's like, yeah, he didn't want to, he didn't want to wear their he didn't want to wear their clothes. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, that's a stupid number. That's a fucking crazy number. And he's like, ah, I'm good. Wasn't having it. Pretty cool. Uh, super cool, actually. But like me, Hunter, Mike Isratel, Fuad, Ian, Sam, Samson, like, that's a big deal. That's a, that, there's, there's a, there's, that's a lot of people for a, for a cool expo where we're giving a bunch of shit away, and then you get to go to the show, and you see Martin Fitzwater's competing, Good Vito's competing. Um, who's the other one? Martin Fitzwater, Good Vito, fuck, Justin Rodriguez. Like, those top three dudes, it's going to be a cool show. Mm-hmm. There's not a bunch of pros competing, but I'm like, it's still like a, a, a it's going to be a cool show. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? How, how do people not, do you just not understand the industry? Do you not understand that things cost money? Like a $50 ticket to get in is not bad. I was going to say, that's pretty reasonable for the expo and the show. Yes. Like you're getting, you get to meet all these people, try free stuff, and then you get a show for 50 bucks. Hmm. Even if it was, even if it wasn't together. Like yeah, even you, so, do you know it's? I think how much is the Pittsburgh? I think the Pittsburgh's sixty bucks for the night show. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think it's sixty bucks for the night show. Mm-hmm. But then if you want to go to the day show, I think it's still fifty bucks to get in the door. Mm-hmm. Like if you go in for prejudging, mm-hmm. I think each one's like thirty to fifty bucks mm-hmm. because it's not fucking free. No. Like if you go to a fucking football game, yeah, well, it's not gonna... free for the fucking football game, right? I'm just mind blown by the fucking concept. Like, do you not understand it takes like and we are the we're we're a platinum sponsor. Like whenever Fuad was telling me about what he's gonna do for the for the athletes, the twenty five hundred bucks to each for those for uh for all those awards, I'm like, that's on top of all the other fucking money. Mm-hmm. I was like, yes, this would be cool to be a part of. Yes, I will do that. But you're not a man of the people. <laughs> It's like, this is a fucking, this is, but I just, it, I was just like, oh my God. Like, if you go to, do you expect to go to a concert and not like pay? Bro, even, even no named bands, like there's going to be a cover at the bar because guess what? That guy's coming out and performing and putting on a show for you. Yeah. To make the bar experience cooler. Yeah. Like it's a $10 cover. It's a $20 cover tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we had to pay him to come in here. Oh, well, he should just come because it's an opportunity for him to do that. Yeah, sure, I could understand that thought process, but hey, can you come over and paint my fucking pavilion for me? It's a good opportunity for you. It's a great opportunity, (laughs) dude. I got people online. I can tell people that you did it. Mm -hmm. I can tell everybody that you did it. Look at at fucking Jimmy up there. (laughs) No, you do the work, you get paid. You you do these things. Yeah, it's the same thing. I'm not making any money this weekend. I'm in the hole quite a bit. Mm-hmm. We still got to get everybody there. Mm-hmm. We're giving away product, taking apparel up. Yeah. S- d- d- the sponsorship of it. I'm like, oh. Oh. Fuck me then, huh? Uh, I just. <laughs> hmm. People just love talking. They just love it. Well, that's why I told him. I was like, "These are the people. They're not going to go regardless." Like he was just <laughs> no, in De- he was just in Detroit twelve months ago. Yeah. He could have came. Yeah, it was free. Yeah. <laughs> we go to all these other event stores that are free. You didn't have. You don't have to buy anything. No, like you don't have to buy anything when we do these store appearances, dude. We went to nine places. There was we did a tour. <laughs> Plenty of opportunities. <laughs> oh my god! It's a show. It's an event. Mm-hmm. Fifty dollars. What do people think occurs? I think because uh, it's exhausting on, on, thinking about well, it. It is, and it's tough. It, you know, we get excited, and I have fun busting balls, and like, what the fuck going on? But at the end of the day. I think people believe because they buy something or buy a ticket or or, uh, have bought a shirt 
or have an Instagram account or have a voice that can be heard, um, they believe that they can say whatever they want. And they can. Freedom of speech. But remember this. You start talking, other people are going to talk back. You start doing things, other people are going to do things back. Like, that's just how this fucking works. Yeah. That's how the world works. And, um, and the internet has created a platform for a lot of people to have a voice and can have a mob mentality. Mm -hmm. and, and we know that there's more sheep than ever within the world. So if all of a sudden people can get behind something to feel a part of something, even though it is, might be negative or uh, they can say and do whatever it is that they want. And it doesn't really matter because there's a whole lot of really cool people that have already bought tickets. Yeah. It's going to sell out this weekend. Yep. It's going to be fucking cool. It's just those small-minded people like that. And it's like, I'm like, man. And at the end of the day, dude, like I said, whenever we started this, it's like some people do just have really bad days. And they need, they need to take it out on something. And they don't follow anything else. Mm -hmm. They don't follow. This is what they follow. So this is where they feel that they have their, that their say. Mm -hmm. Because they're a fan. So it's it's like okay cool, that's all right. It's just like when a bodybuilder does bad or somebody does bad at something. Like if the top guy in the industry sucks at one show because something happened, he's the worst fucking bodybuilder. They're ever. done. They're done forever. <laughs> he should fucking quit. He should give up. It's like, hey, <laughs> he just missed. Fucking sucks for him too. Because instead of a third place finish, he's in fucking ninth place. Mm -hmm. Doesn't suck. <laughs> he just missed. Yeah. Okay, it's okay, bro. It's a it's a miracle. The 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 peak day, the peak hour, oh, or, peak, or the peak minute. Peaking in bodybuilding is insanely difficult. And, so and hard. Ty, Ty, you know, whenever he termed it, he's like, he's like, your bodybuilders peaking at a high percentage, like a ninety eight percent best. Mm -hmm. It's like catching lightning in a bottle and having it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's crazy because, you know, whenever people compare them online, mm -hmm. like on these bodybuilding channels, they'll be like 2011 Phil Heath versus 2003 Ronnie Coleman and 09 Cutler versus 11 Phil, all these things. And it's like they have these certain years mm -hmm. of these athletes because they literally caught lightning in a bottle. Yeah. They did it. They achieved a 98 to 99% fucking perfection. Mm -hmm. Almost like Phil's 2011 was like 100%. Fucking mind blowing. I was there. You heard the gasps. You heard the fucking air get sucked out of a room. Give me goosebumps. Oh, bro. Phil, that's when Phil became the dream killer. That's when he became the dream Man, killer. What a nickname. That's when he became a fucking anti-hero. He, he was a villain mm -hmm. because it was fucking wild. Lightning in a bottle was caught. Nothing like it ever. Hard, round, full, dense, hard, dry, you name it. Phil was it in 2011. And it's like, that's so difficult to do. And then the next year, Phil came out in 2012. Didn't look like that. Phil was still 90 fucking 5%, 96%. Phil in 2011, it's like 99.5%. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it was wild. So it's like it's super difficult to do. And if you don't have that top tier percent every time, people go, oh, he sucks now. He's not, he's, he's done. <laughs> Came back in 13 and it was like, oh, fuck. There it is. That's 98% Phil. Still not as good as two. It, oh, man, it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. But that's just, I mean, it's the fun of it. But there's also so much criticism because it is a super subject, sub, super subjective sport. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and people are always going to have stuff to say. Yeah. And if you're in not in really good spot in life, you're not going to have much good to say because mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with your personal space and what's going on. Yeah. And I guess you could say whenever I was going through some shit in like 2017. 2016, 2017. Might have been a little crazy. It was wild. A little crazy. Yeah. Might have did some things and said some things that I forgot about. 
I could probably, there's probably moments in time back then that uh, things that I said or did, I don't remember because mm-hmm. I blocked them out of my mind. Yeah. And then like somebody could bring it up and I'd be like, ooh, I completely forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Black that part out. My bad. Sorry about that. So, and if there's that many people going through some shit, our society is fucked, which might be true too. I, I think, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, sixteen, seventeen, that crazy time. Uh huh. But I mean you threw. That's where it all started. That's where everything came from. Mm-hmm. You know? Where it all came from. And I don't know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I will say, uh, so changing the subject a little bit. Yeah. You had a big weekend. Yep. Really cool. Elegance Elite had a pretty big weekend. Massive. Which was a really big deal. And uh, I like talking about it because it is something that it's not new to me, but it's still, it'll never not be inspiring mm-hmm. because it has to do with kids. And I fucking think it's the most phenomenal thing in the world is like watching kids develop. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. So this weekend was, this past weekend was level seven and level six states. Emmy's a level seven. She just turned 10, so she's in literally the youngest age bracket for level seven, and Emmy dominates, but there's one girl in the state that's pretty fucking good. Well, all weekend long, every girl in level seven had their best meet of the year. It was wild. All of them. Every single one was like fucking just murdering shit. And Hannah's like texting me, and she's, I'm just like, holy fuck. We had four all-around champions, all-around state champions. Four of them, 11 event champions, state champs. That's fucking wild. Yeah. Wild. But um, the one girl, Allie, like put on a fucking show. She had a 39.075. You get 39. You get a 39 plus. You're starting to, you're touching on some bad motherfucker shit. Like, wow, you put together, you strung together an entire meet and literally had little to no mistakes. Mm Mm-hmm. Very little no mistakes. You get a 38, you're legit as fuck. Mm-hmm. 38, you're like, oh, you're a legit gymnast. The dumb question. This is out of 40 total points. 40 total points, yeah. yeah. 10, 10 points per event, four yeah. events. Yeah. Uh, it goes um, vault, or it goes beam, bar, bars, beam, floor, vault, all in alphabetical order. If you start on bars, you just go alphabetical order through them all. Okay. Start on vault, you go vault, bars, beam, floor. goes in alphabetical order. And... Um, so it was just really cool. And I'm like, y- y- if your team is good at level seven, like your gym's pretty fucking good. Level seven is real gymnastics. Level seven is the shit. Starting to get a little dangerous. Mm-hmm. Level eight, if you were a level eight gymnast, you are a skilled gymnast. You are, you are skilled, disciplined, and very good. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get to that level. Um, but Emmy went on Saturday. And uh, the reason I'm telling the story is because Emmy was going up against this young girl, Aspen. That is her biggest competition. Phenomenal gymnast. And the gym's pretty good. Uh, they're, uh, they're out of Johnstown. I think that's where they're out of. Yeah, they're out of there. Um, and Emmy and her compete. And that's, she, has, she has beaten Emmy before. I think she beat Emmy one time. Mm-hmm. And, but she's beat her in other events. So it's like, this girl is, she's very good too. So... It started out, and uh, <clears throat> Emmy went first on floor, and she was the second gymnast to go on floor. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. I was starting to get nervous, and Emmy fucking slaughtered this floor routine. It was a 9.9, and I'm like, I was like, oh, fuck, dude. It was the highest floor routine of the fucking weekend, and I'm like, that was fucking wild. That was wild really cool so and then the girl was on vault aspen and then she did a great job Mm -hmm. and they went back and forth she won emmy won floor aspen won vault and then they go to and then aspen went to bars and she had she won bars as well and then as emmy went through uh we go through it all and i'm adding the numbers up as they're going through and i'm like emmy's on beam last one to go on the beam the girl aspen had finished everybody was done except they're like two or three girls and they had to finish on beam before awards. And, uh, and I was looking at Hannah. I'm like, Holy fuck, dude, Emmy's got to nail this beam routine to win. And I did the math and Emmy had to get a 9.65 to win the meet. 
Oh my god. A 9.65 to win the meet on on beam and not one individual the entire weekend had a 9.65 on beam. They were judging super tough on beam. Emmy's good on floor and beam cuz that's Hannah's specialties. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. I don't know what's going to happen here. Emmy's a fucking stud on beam, but if nobody else has gotten 9.65s or higher, nobody's gotten a 9.6 or higher. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm cool, man. Yep. Emmy just, I would like to see what happens. It was the most high pressure situation that she has ever been in in her fucking life. She knew she had to nail the beam routine. She knew the other girl finished and Aspen's really good. And Emmy had to fucking do it. And I'm like, I'm on the sidelines just like, I don't know what I would do. I would be, like, my heart is beating fast now. Like, are, are, are you guys communicating before she goes on? Like, are, do you talk to her at all? No, no. Or is like, she with, just with the team with Hannah? Oh, she's with, the, the, we're, we're in the stands. Yeah. We're, and Hannah's there. And, uh, and Hannah, Hannah loves coaching. Mm-hmm. Like, she, Hannah is, she loves coaching. And uh, every kid's a little different, and she knows how to get in these kids' heads to make sure that they perform at a, at a higher level. Like, at what, how, do, how do I get this kid to perform? How do I get Emmy to perform? How do I get Ali to perform? How do I get Amelia? How do I get um, Katie? How do I, do, how do I get these kids to perform at their times? Because she coaches them all day, every fucking day, so she knows. She knows these kids better than, than the parents do when it comes to gymnastics and how they perform in, in pressured situations. Yeah. Like, I've tried to have my say with gymnastics and Emmy, and I've been told to shut the fuck up, and then it starts an argument, and then it goes back, and I'm like, fuck, she's right, damn it. <laughs> so, but Emmy is on going on beam, and uh, Hannah looks at her and tells her, every tenth counts. You have to nail this fucking beam routine if you want the all-around. And Emmy's like, okay. And she's like, pretend you're Regan Smith. And you're the anchor on beam. So Reagan Smith oh God, dude. <laughs> is the Oklahoma gymnast who is their anchor on beam. And she's the one that closes out the fucking meat on beam. And that girl fucking perfect. Next to perfect every time. Like average is a 9.95 on beam. Stud. And that's Emmy's favorite team. So she said, pretend you're Reagan Smith. You're the anchor on beam. You have to nail this. Oh my God! And I'm like, and like, I'm I'm in the stands, like I don't know, I'm not even gonna fucking watch and this and that. And uh, she goes up and fucking slaughters the beam routine, slaughters it nine point seven five seven seven five. And I'm like, holy fuck, holy fuck! How do you do that? How, dude? I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't either. That's what I mean. I'm like, you're 10. A lot of kids, a lot of people, whether they're adults or not, fold in that because of the pressure. Mm -hmm. Emmy did not. She embraced it. Hannah told her, do this, do that. Like, direct. Goes out and does it. And then afterwards, I'm like, Emmy, fucking give her a big hug. And she's like, I'm like, no jumping, no nothing. Just like, yeah, happy, excited. Yeah. Like oh, very proud of herself. That's but sweet girl. Not showing too much like of like, yeah, like nothing like it. It was just like, okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck that. Give me my hardware. So she goes and, and, and again, like it was just wild because then the, uh, the other parents of, of the other gym and Aspen's parents are the coaches at, at, at that gym as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were just like, hey, this is incredible. I'm like, right? This is wild. On they went back and forth all day. Like, they're like, Emmy just performs so well on floor and beam. They're like, it is awesome to watch. Yeah. And they want, and both of them wanted to get pictures with each other because, like, in gymnastics, like when you're watching college gymnastics, mm-hmm. like it's getting bigger and bigger. College gymnastics is growing by the fucking week, and. Uh, They'll show, like, if girls make it to college and they're competing against each other, say a girl from Kentucky and a girl from Arkansas, and, like, they were like, oh, they competed against each other when they were kids. So they were like, can we get a picture together? Yeah. So that, like, maybe if they both make it, do something cool one day, yeah. like, they'd have those photographs. Yeah. And I was like, they were good sports. They said good job to each other. They were, they, they, it was really nice. 
I'm like, you two were absolute fucking savages performing right now. And then you're like sweet little girls, nice and polite to each other. But I think you want to kill each other. But I don't know if you do or not. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. But it was cool because like Emmy killed Floor and Beam, Aspen slaughtered Vault and, and Bars. And, like, they both have room to improve in those areas that they didn't win on. Right. So it's like, I'm like, hey, this is pretty fucking cool. Mm -hmm. That these two are the best in the state. They're going to go to the next level together. They're going to have to continue to level up. They both know the things that they have to work on. And, like, I'm like, I guarantee we're going to see this shit again. Oh, yeah. They're just going to they're gonna be competing. Because they're both 10 years old. Mm -hmm. you, you're 10 years old at level eight. You're... Oh, why the fuck are you 10 at level eight? Like, you are you being abused? <laughs> <laughs> you start thinking that yeah. shit. So, wow. yeah, it was it was really cool. It was really, really cool. And I will Yeah, you know. dude, I, I don't I don't know how like like I can't handle that type of pressure. I can't. I don't got it in me. I'll I'll be the first to tell you, nope, I am not the anchor on anything. <laughs> Like, you want to count on me when it means the most? Like, it's a roll of the dice, dude. If it's not having to do with work, <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't yeah. have to do with work, if it's not a if it's not a deadline on a graphic, yeah. like, don't count me out, dude. The, I mean, that's and that's what makes a team. Like, for how we operate as a team and yeah. why we're so good at what we do on everything here, it's because everybody is set in those places to fucking slaughter what they do. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not having one person wear fifteen hats. And expecting the perfect out of those 15 different things. It's like, yeah. But then when it comes to like that, but we're grown adults. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. This is, these are 10 year olds. 10 year olds. Dude, that's, that, that scene is like, it's from a movie. The end of the meet, it's coming down to this. <laughs> it's within a fraction of a point. Like, what? like, dude. Oh, yeah, it was wild. It was, it was. And they're 10. It was, it was that's what i mean like i was holy fuck so you know hannah and i talk about it at nighttime, and i'm like hey like that was wild she's like dude she's like yes that was fucking crazy she's like for for a child to do that and then we talk about emmy like she's the smallest always the smallest always the oh so cute but then just goes and kills shit and just really nice like emmy's so sweet very naive, very innocent, but just loves gymnastics. So, I don't know. We never might, we never, we might not ever find out why. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple theories that Hannah and I have, and I've discussed it with you guys. I don't know if I've ever said it on here. I probably have. I've mentioned that Emmy isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Emmy can remember things that she absolutely loves like no other. Like a genius would. Floor routines, beam routines, this person, that person. Anything to do with college gymnastics. She remembers the fucking lineups from Oklahoma, LSU, What, what like this weekend's big meet. So she knows everything that's going on. But when it comes to reading and comprehension about a fucking story she read, you just read it seven times. I don't know. <laughs> and there are certain times whenever Emmy is just out in left field and you're like, What's going on up in that head? I don't think much is going on. Where are you at right now? I think you might have like birds chirping in your head right now in an open field with nothing else in there but the wind blowing between your ears. That's it. No obstructions. Nope. Nothing. And hence why I believe that that's at least my theory on why she can do what she can do. Yeah. Like whenever she goes out to perform, <sighs> loves it. I don't think there's anything like blocking mm -mm. the excitement. Mm -mm. I don't think there's any stress. I don't think there's any blocks or obstructions. Like, that's why I believe that she's able to do those things. Not because she's dumb, but because she just doesn't have anything up there. It's a blank, clean slate. Yeah. She's got it figured out. I don't know if she does. I just, I, that, that's what I mean. Like, I don't know if she's got it figured out or there's just nothing up there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, how much, how cool would it be for your mind to just go blank for fucking oh my, 30 minutes? Oh, my God. I'd feel so rested. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, it's exhausting thinking this way. 
Oh, By man. this way, I mean non-fucking stop. Oh, my God. Thinking about the good, the bad. This could go wrong. This could go right. This could go my way. This could go their way. We have, there's <laughs> fucking 70 different things going on at one time here. Yeah. Everybody knows that Seth and Thursdays are just, and Thursday mornings and Seth, fucking bullshit. <laughs> just because it's finance, <laughs> purchasing, accounting, everything going on. Like, it's just da 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 and then there's other things. And then we got to have a meeting about this and the transformation challenges going on. And then we got this and then we got that. It's like my head's moving a million miles an hour. And I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Did I eat? I didn't even drink any fluid for four fucking hours. You know, some days are like that for us. A lot of days, yeah. Um, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And if I could go blank, open field, birds chirping. You know, I... I have glimpses of that. They're very short lived, like extremely short lived, but I notice them when they occur. And I'm like, man, like what, what did I do? What did I eat? What did I take that made my mind be so clear for that short period of time? It, it's. It, you could like in, in those situations, like that's the, I, I don't know. Like it's stressful. Mm -hmm. It's not like, bad stress no you know what i mean like nothing bad's happening in our life it's just work yep but it's still stress mm -hmm. you still get anxious yeah but it's like you and i talk about it all the time if we just keep showing up mm -hmm. and being ourselves really good shit's going to occur. yeah it's not a bad anxious it's just wanting it to be nearly perfect it's wanting to it's wanting the work to be done to my standard to your standard to oh that, yeah that, that's it just yeah. want it to look great, taste great, and top you know, tier because yeah. we're we want the people to be excited about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Because we said like we're not the other, we're not the likely pair to be in the situation. No, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like the moment the moment I I don't hold that standard and keep that anxiousness high yeah. is the moment when everything just starts to become like everything else, just kind of standard, kind of yeah, normal. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, no, I don't want pretty good. I want to be like, fuck. Yeah. They did it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I think so. We, I mean, in, in, I mean, I've looked at shit like that my entire life, to be honest. I've done that with everything. Like, yeah. even, even when I was a fuck off in high school and in, in college, like, I still hated the thought of disappointing my parents fucking hated that idea do you think people get tied up like because i know what you mean do you think people uh like rather than embracing like that they just kind of understand that they are a disappointment you know yeah quote unquote. like yeah. they accept that that like i'm not as good as i thought i was gonna be yeah i think even though those feelings are shitty like feeling that way mm -hmm. even though that feels shitty i think it's way harder to deal with the emotions of being really really anxious and performing at a very high level like i think that's still more exhausting and still more taxing so i think i think it's easier to feel like ah yeah i'm i'm second third place i'm i'm okay or i'm a little bit of a this is just who i am this is how i was raised it's like ah i don't know and i mean you're a walking example of the fact that you really shouldn't be on your uh, going on your 12th iron man performance no because you weren't like that and now you are it's like it, it's kind of that thing where people you know you you don't have to settle mm -hmm. you shouldn't like uh, a 25 year old bob would not believe that a 35 year old bob would be competing in his 12th iron man event no you know what i mean mm -hmm. Like, and those are the things that, like, you know, whenever you see somebody young and you want to help them, mm -hmm. like, I want to give you so much advice. And you can talk to them, but they might not really be ready for that talk. No. They might not be in that, in that frame of mind where they're prepared for the intensity or the level or be able to conceptualize those thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. at that time, you know? Mm -hmm. that, and that's what makes life so, I mean, that's what makes it beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I'll be honest. I had I had no business going as fast as I did on Sunday. Like, yeah, I was in shape. I was prepared to go that or faster. But um, I mean, my my coach always tries to decipher like, oh, what went wrong? 
You know, and that's just what a good coach yeah. does. They're like, oh, she's like, what happened on the swim? I'm like, well, it was a decent swim. What do you mean what happened? And, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I never comment on anything till a couple of days after the race, because like, that's when all the emotions are there and you don't, you're not thinking clearly, but I wasn't recovered for that. I, I, I left work on a, on a Wednesday, flew out, traveled for 12 hours, didn't sleep for three nights in a row, ate like shit. Most of those days was under hydrated. And then just heart and will got me through that race day. I mean, and, and that's that's with pretty much everything that that we do. I mean, I don't mm. I don't know many business owners that are going out and running an Ironman period. Yet alone, I I think I can fucking win one. Like I think I can. <laughs> Actually, I know I can. Just the the perfect day hasn't come yet. You know. But again, that, 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 that's what's so exciting about it. Like, I, I know the day is going to come. Oh yeah, it's gonna come. It's oh, gonna be yeah. fucking cool too. Maybe, maybe, I think that, uh, I think that. I mean, we've talked about our personal goal here is to get this thing running and operating in a way where we are not a hundred and ten percent hands on of absolutely everything. Yeah. I mean, we've restructured a whole lot of things here. We operate at a higher level. We've put people in place for success. We've created a much more uh, savvy team environment, communication throughout every department. Um, reporting, um, you name it. From an internal structure standpoint, in the past three and a half months, holy fucking shit! This is a whole entire. Com this is a completely different uh, company operating internally. Yeah, that nobody else sees. But I think that they're starting to see it with how we're releasing products, what it looks like, how things are hitting. Like Axe and Sledge is on a massive uptick right now, and it is absolutely incredible. And uh, a lot of people are, are, are the reason for it, not just you and I, but. It needs to have leadership. It needs to have a direction. It needs to have a whole entire brain behind it. Yeah. And there will be come a time, I believe, in the coming months, several months, that it will be a much smoother, cleaner operating system here, mm -hmm. where you and I will be able to take a step back and start to go into the other endeavors in life to grow the empire. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we just talked about that the other night, and I was thinking about that more, you know, uh, you know, we've been at this for quite a few years now, ups and downs. Um, but I think before I had I had the wrong thought process with what growing a business, mm -hmm. like my thought process was wrong, that I thought we could bring on really great people, get everything fine tuned, running on its own. And then that's when you just step back. I'm an owner. They got it. I'm mm. gonna, I'm gonna collect my paycheck. Everything's great. I'm gonna go vacation and do my thing. I'm gonna go on six vacations a year. Every other month, I'm out of here. And now, I'm not rushing the process to get it there, but I want it to get there. That we can step back, for the same reason we talked the other night. I want to do even more things outside yes. of this building. Yes. That's gonna make this building grow. These people grow. It's gonna it's gonna add more more revenue back into the company that we're trying to just constantly reinvest to. Mm -hmm. That's what I want now. Yes, I, and, and I don't I don't think you see it so so early on when when you're in the trenches and you're just trying to dig out those first one to three to five years. Like you obviously are working a lot of off. a lot of fucking supplement companies are started by fucking people that believe that they're going to sell the supplement company. Yeah. Everybody right. thinks they're going to sell a supplement company for a hundred or $50 million. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks they're like, Oh dude, I'm going to run this. I'm going to open this thing up. I'm going to start it in three years. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to make millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Hey, dickheads. <laughs> That's not how this works. No, dude. You know, you could have a company that ha makes $50 million a year. Gross, gross revenue and then it not profit anything and you're not getting you're not getting three times its value or three three times its fucking gross revenue they're like oh we did 50 million dollars we'll make 150 million dollars because of this company it's like where the fuck did you come up with that number you yeah. stupid motherfucker yeah. dude three years in like banks are don't even like they don't even look at you any three yeah. three years in banks are like Okay, good job. You started a company. You want a fucking $5 million line of credit? Get the fuck, get the fuck out of here, you dipshits. They're like, here's a credit card. Nice. <laughs> yeah. 
it, and it's just it's it's crazy because that's the mindset of a lot of people they're like oh my god oh, and dude, this is this is a long haul man and and if you want to be successful uh and and i mean people can define success in other ways because there's people out there that actually don't give a fuck about their people and just care about the mm -hmm. the bottom line and the money that they put into their pockets and uh, and rightfully so you can do that you can operate that way just expect turnover and expect more of a headache whereas uh the way that you and i see it is is like yes we need to generate a high income net income i want yes we need to do that why because i want more out of this all yeah i want more i want to grow the empire Yes, you cannot do that. If you just have gross revenue, high gross revenue, great fucking story. But that income has to be there so that you can continue to invest the money in other aspects of life in your community. Mm -hmm. Like, why do we want to re increase income? So that we can treat our people better, so that we can grow and expand our reach within the community. Like, we, I, we have talked about this at length. Like, we have 43 employees, soon to have more. Man, I'd really like to have 100 employees. Yeah. If, we had a, if we had something that had 100 fucking people in our community employed in our community, holy fucking shit, dude. Mm -hmm. You do those things. If you do good, if you focus on doing good, growing things, investing in your people, investing in these things, in your community, showing up, being a hardworking, good motherfucker, great things will come your way. Yeah. Great things. It will be an empire. It will be something that people will look at and be like, holy fuck, dude. And I want to do it in a way with people that I genuinely love. Mm -hmm. Like yourself. Like our team. Dude, to have, could you, dude, having this many people is pretty wild. Having 100 employees and having all kinds of really cool shit within the community, the things that we have discussed and, and, and the opportunities that it would present. Yeah. Do I want to sell more shit? Absolutely. How do we do so? Do I do it by just... Selling the same shit and driving it down your throat? No. I want to come out with new, innovative, fun shit to make your life better. So in order to do that, we have to get all the people here to think in that same manner. This is not about your pocketbook, ladies and gentlemen, employees. It's not about your pocketbook right now. It is a creating an environment for the con consumers to just fucking immerse themselves in everything that we do because all of you are working so well and hard together. Not individuals, but as a fucking team. You do these things. You slaughter your position at the highest level. Great things will come from it. And it's shown through never-ending chocolate, marshmallow milk, all the new cool shit we have coming with the grind, all the new cool shit we have coming with H2, all the brand new products that we're coming out with later in the summer, in the fucking beginning of fall, into Black Friday. Like, our team is humming the motherfucker along because it is about the people. It is about doing something that other companies cannot do because they do not have a group of hardworking, badass motherfuckers like we do. It's in the people. It's all in the people. And, and seeing it actually like you and I do the work to create this, oh boy, mm -hmm. mm. this is going to be pretty wild. And... You know, you and I, again, talked at length in private about, like, it's great. I, I like money. Mm -hmm. But money is, is a tool. I know that if we do something that is us, truly our hearts and passion and love, people will, it will, people will gravitate to it because that's what started this all. Yeah. It was all done with, man, what happens if we just do really cool shit with each other? And now it's like, hey, we got a real, lot of really cool people here. What happens if we get all these people together to do really cool shit together and everybody feel it like everybody wants more out of life. And if you and I here are leading this, then we need to make sure people know that it's from the place that, that the, the simple uh, dickheads we were in 2015 and 2016. And I believe over the past three and a half months, it's, it's really come out that way because yeah. we're in pretty cool positions. And if all we have to do is wake up every single morning and be ourselves to the fullest extent, great things will occur. People will see it. People will feel it. Other people will become the best versions of themselves. And if everybody can operate in that way, you're going to have something that is unique as a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Pretty cool. And and I mean, people listening, they 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 know it because they see a lot of this stuff. But I think it's cool the the people that have been with us here since day one. I I think they I mean, they know it's this hasn't been an overnight success. <laughs> Oh no! You know we've been we've been at this eight years, nine years, ten years, just with concepts, and and ideas and dreams. You know, and if they and 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 it hasn't been easy, but it's been pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, you know, they just want to do a good job in life, and it takes every different walk of life to make something like this work. You know, you and I are entrepreneurs. You and I will take chances on ourselves every day of the fucking week. Mm -hmm. And now as, you know, we get older and more experienced and our, our every this whole thing grows, I look at it and you look at it as saying like, oh, yeah, we're going to keep taking chances. Mm -hmm. Not just because that's what you and I do, which it is why we do it, but it's because of the confidence we have in our team. Like all these, I'm having new dreams about what I want to do in the community. And the only reason that that exists is because I know that there are dozens of people on our team that I can literally think and be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. If I was to do this, this is how I would do it with this person. And then once I have a little bit of a concept, I come and bring it to you and I'm like, what do you think of this? And it's like, yeah, that we could do that in 12 months. And it's like, I know, but we got to start thinking of it now. Yeah. And it's like, that's why you, you take the, the risk. Well, some people just aren't risk takers mm -hmm. and that's okay because I don't need a whole entire company full of risk takers. No. I need a whole entire company full of people that want to be the best version of themselves, which might not be a risk taker. They might be the most reliable motherfucker in their department just shows up every day, high percentage of output every single time. But they just, they're just like, Hey dude, I got no business spending every penny I have. I just got no business doing that. That's not me. Okay, cool. So that is who we are, but you're a benefit to us. So how can we set this up so that this person can continue to be top tier and continue to level up and have value and us make sure that they're able to level up and make more money for their family, be able to buy the house that they dream of. Their, their dream house might not be a fucking $1.5 million mansion with a fucking waterfall and a, a fucking hunting reserve. It might just be like, hey, I really like this neighborhood. I dream of living in this neighborhood with my family and three kids and all this cool shit. Yeah. Okay. How do you and I, how do we create that opportunity for this person to, to achieve that? We put them in the most advantageous position they could be in, challenge them, push them, and see what they're made of. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that with everybody. And that takes a whole lot of brain power and a little anxiety because it's a really cool, oh, man, we're going to do all this. And then, you, and then it starts and you're like, oh, that was a fuck up, huh? That sucked. Gosh, son of a bitch. That didn't go the way we thought it was so going to go. It was going to be way different. i got to plan this whole fucking thing over. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool, like. You know, we put these people in, in a position that like our risk, our risky idea, <laughs> it becomes less risk because of, of their, their capabilities. 100%. Like we bring a risk to the table. It's a huge risk because Bob and Seth thought about it and they can't execute it alone. Yep. And then let's bring in these 40 people to make this less of a risk and just more of like a sure fucking thing. Yes. That's fucking cool. Huge. There's opportunities on the table for us right now as a company that I know for a fact. We know. We talk about it. We've gone through it all. That it is fucking massive. Bit butthole puckering. But how do you achieve it? You don't achieve it by two, two fellows. You don't. You can't achieve it with a handful. You need a company. You need a team. You need a large group of people mm -hmm. that are very good at what they do. Not the, the, the logistics team can't be shipping out the crazy number of packages they ship out and they can't grow within their department if we're not creating a cool part, a cool product. And then the marketing team isn't marketing the cool product like it. 
they don't get to do their job if these if this side doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Nobody's more important than the other because the people in marketing don't want to ship shit. They don't want to ship out thousands of fucking packages Mm-mm. and have the like, hey, we got to work this, we got to do this. We have this many incoming trucks. <sighs> hey, we got 450 pallets showing up. Where the fuck are they supposed to go? I don't know. Nope, that's why we have a logistics team that does all these things. <laughs> there's a lot. That, and again, there's if you don't, if, if you're a business owner, um, you understand the number of moving parts because not only are the all these different departments and moving parts, there's all these different personalities and you you become a little bit of a different person, but then you also have to go home and be nice. <laughs> And not boss your entire family around like you do people at work. Or like, hey, we're not at work. Okay? Don't talk to me that way. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm not being mean. She's like, you're being very direct. And I don't like it. Okay. I love you. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck. I know. I got to get better. <laughs> got to get better. Yeah. Don't tell my wife... Don't instruct her how to cook dinner <laughs> like I would instruct how to prepare an email campaign. <laughs> Just do this and this. Don't tell me what to do. Over there. I was just coming why, to help. Why don't you go take a shower? Yeah. Okay. Fuck. Man, I pissed Kim off last night and this morning. Oh. Like twice. And then she told me about it at the pool this morning. She's like, don't piss me off again today. I'm like, you got it. So don't talk to you. I literally think that way. I'm like, that means I'm not talking to you the rest of the night. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to say something. Mm-hmm. And I might not mean to. It just came out that way. Yeah. Hello. Oh, such a dick last night. I don't even know what I did. All I know is I took my dinner plate and went and sat on the couch with it instead of at the counter. Like I stomped in there like a fucking man child. <laughs> Everybody does it. Yeah. Everybody does it. Everybody does it though. I know. And it, that's why that's why there's so much funny shit on TikTok and Instagram about couples. That's why like, you know, Kim will send you something or Hannah will send me something or I'll send Hannah something. Like it's just like dumb shit that the other the significant other does and you're like, "Man, that's how you fucking think." Like, are you retarded? Mm. <laughs> this morning I was like, hey, I was like, you know we have 10 minutes before we got to leave. Because she was sitting on the couch with her coffee. Oh. And she looked back and she's like, you know, if we're late for the pool, it's your fucking fault every time. And I'm like, fuck. And she's right. Because <laughs> like I get the last minute like bubble guts like before I got to leave the house oh, and I have to use the shit. bathroom. and It's always me. Oh, always oh. she's like don't fucking tell me like, you got it yeah i don't i did that quite a bit early on in hannah and i's relationship yeah and like hannah is very poignant with time like that bitch knows exactly when she has to leave yeah yeah kim knows exactly how much time she needs to leave the house like i mean she's like a fucking offensive lineman mm-hmm. like Take three steps forward, one step right. That offensive lineman is taking three 12 inch steps forward and one 12 inch step to the right. Yeah. Like that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That is Hannah when it comes to certain things like time. And like the kids are that way. Like, like if, if SJ's taking too long, like <laughs> I see it because it's funny to me because I know how Hannah is about time. SJ will take a long time to put his shoes on because he just wants to be a dick. He'll like put the shoes on the wrong feet. Now he knows he's, he fucking knows everything on how to do and get ready. And she fucks with her so bad now. And I look at like, what was it? I think it was, no, it was a few mornings ago. And he was doing something. And I'm just sitting there like, hey. I was like, put your fucking shoes on right. And he's like, okay. <laughs> I put them on right away and stood up. I'm like, oh, oh man. <laughs> and she's looking at me. She's like, he's an asshole. And I'm like, he's just learning his boundaries, babe. Learning his boundaries. And Emmy is so, oh, yesterday was so funny. So uh, Emmy's a little bit of a bitch sometimes now. She's getting older, like growing up. And, you know, the prepubescent bullshit is going to start occurring. And uh, 
So yesterday I went over to, like before I trained, I went over to see Hannah and just say hi, see how our day's going. And uh, they were moving mats. Well, Hannah is a mat fucking queen. Like, dude, they better be exactly the fucking way they're supposed to be. Her gym is always in order, clean, structured, so she knows where everything is. And there's a fuckload of mats. There's like 50 grand worth of fucking mats over there that are movable, that you take all over. Some of the mats are 10 grand because of the fucking big giant ones, you know? Mm -hmm. So yesterday I'm standing there and, and she just looks at me and she goes, Emmy is such a bossy little shit when it comes to these mats with these girls. Like where to put them, how to put them. And I looked at her and I'm like, you think so? She's like, yeah. Like she's like a little worked up. She's like, we got to talk to her about this. Because Emmy can't really help because she's so fucking short. She can't carry them. She's like, so she just like kind of directs. Yeah. Like that fucking guy on the construction site. I was just going to say the foreman like coming in. Like, however, hey. however, I was like, oh yeah, you think so? And she kind of looks at me like I was being a smart ass. I was like, hey, who do you think raises this child? You do, you crazy bitch. <laughs> I was like, how are you with your mats? And she goes, Oh no. And like got started getting red faced. And I was like, it's your fault, dude. Mm -hmm. This is 100 percent your fault. Mm -hmm. I was like, this kid's the bossy bitch about fucking mats because of you. <laughs> it's your fault. Because, dude, if the mats aren't, if she's if Hannah's not there for a weekend and she comes in on Monday and the mats are all fucked up and they're not the way they're supposed to be, oh, she'll have every fucking kid restructure them. It goes this way. This is how they're supposed to go. I don't want to see it any other way. Structure. It's important. <laughs> and I'm like, Hannah, you know that Emmy's watching every fucking move you make. Like, you are her idol in life. I feel like Emmy could run that gym. That's probably what Emmy's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy because there's certain things in conditioning that fucking kid hates. Like, Emmy will just be such a fucking pain in the ass about it. She, like, hates certain exercises because she's not good at them. Mm -hmm. And, like, that, she can go do all these crazy gymnastics feats, but dude, this kid, when it comes to certain exercises, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just like, fuck you, kid. <laughs> it's funny. But every person has that with their kids, you know? Yeah. yeah. Everybody has something. Oh, fuck. Good times. Yeah. Well. That's about it. Anything else cool? No, that's about it. We're doing it. another one. Yeah, Chattanooga. Out of the blue, huh? Yep, threw it on the schedule. Good idea. Yep, the day we're supposed to leave for a vacation. How does Kim feel about that? Is she a little mad? Uh, no. Hmm. No, she was all for it. That's great. She wants to utilize the van. She's oh. like, we have the van. I yeah. want to bring the dogs everywhere. I want to drive 10 hours to Chattanooga, and then that's I want to awesome. drive 10 hours to Outer Banks. And Fuck you. I'm like... I was like, you testing me? Are you testing me? Yeah. Just a test. So like instantly, like five minutes later on the plane, book the <laughs> book the race. <laughs> I showed her. Then she got a little mad. She was like, we actually didn't even discuss this. I was like, you gave me the go. Uh, She's like, I did. So we're pumped. Yeah, so I'll fly in. My buddy Tony will have his pro debut there, nice. which is really cool. And then she'll drive in on Saturday with the dogs in the van. And then I'll race Sunday, and then we'll get right in the van and drive to the other banks. I mean, it's pretty cool. I think so. It's super cool. Everything's on there. Like, we're in no rush. It's just just hanging out. Do you know how excited I would be to sit in that van, like, with Hannah, drive somewhere, and, like, coffee, just put your feet up? Just Dude, drive, yeah. have a fresh cup of coffee. Yeah. Maybe like a little snack. Yep. Yeah. And then Jay like told me some spots to like, like instantly when I told him driving Chattanooga to Outer Banks, he's like, got a couple spots that you need to stop at. I'm like, how the fuck how the would fuck you know Jay that? Know? So apparently, Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to stop in Asheville. I'm like, what the fuck is in Asheville? He's like, Google it. He's like, it's beautiful. I Googled it. Beautiful. beautiful breweries cool little restaurants like coffee spots and then just like the fucking mountains of of north carolina yep so we're gonna stop there find a cool spot open the doors and just exactly hey, yeah. how you said because you don't have anything to do it's a vacation nothing to do to relax and i have nothing to train for so oh man yeah you'll go nuts by day four. Oh yes i will <laughs> luckily i'll have my bike with me good point yep 
Good point. I know Hannah and I have to plan our our little getaway together, and then uh, and then um, our family vacation. We got to yeah. figure that fucking out. Yeah, a little behind. That's all right. That'll be okay. We got time. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> cool. But, all a- right. AR release. AR release. April eighteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, fuck. Didn't even bring that up. It's in the YouTube video, but uh, we are doing a charity shirt. Yes. For this release. Uh, um. The uh, the charity that uh, that we'll be doing every single every single year we find something to donate to. Mm-hmm. Uh, we find a place. You know, we talk a really big game about you know everything that we do, who we are, um, everything that we embody. That's what we just had this whole podcast about. Um, so every year we've done something, and people have got you all have gotten behind it and did something absolutely incredible. Uh, the Zo- Princess Zoe and her coming down with that uh, rare form of uh, brain tumor that overtook her life and they had to go all over the country. We raised a hundred thousand dollars for that. Kelsey Leinhardt at rescue 22, you guys helped raise uh, over $50,000 for her to get a rescue dog and to also contribute to her life. Um, and we donate, you know, throughout the year to other things that we're not really public about because it's just nice to donate without having to tell a bunch of people. And, you know, cause you all have your own things going on in life, but whenever there's something that we believe is necessary for you all to get behind and we want to have an impact, we let you guys know. So this one, we have a shirt that's being released in this, re- in this release that a hundred percent of the profits are going to a uh, charity foundation called the my Three Sixty project. The my Three Sixty project um, is mission work by, uh, a few people, and one of the people that is a massive part of it is Zach Owens. The mission work is that uh, they go into less fortunate places throughout the world and build shoes for children. So they go down into Mexico, uh, where it is very poor, and these children don't have much. Um, and most of them don't have shoes or have shoes that are old, beat up, and do not fit. They've never had a brand new pair of shoes. So this charity has... Uh, and a group of people have come up with the My360 project where they go into these places and build shoes on site for these children. They do it in Mexico. They do it in Africa. Uh, Zach has done it before. Zach has done it, uh, I think, three times now. Uh, and every time he has gone, uh, I donate personally, and then we make a donation from the company. The guy that, um, that runs the whole project has noticed that we have sent a good bit of money to them and is ask Zach, who, who is this and what do they do? Uh, and Zach has explained who we are and has explained that, you know, uh, he and I go hunting and, you know, we're pretty decent human beings and good motherfuckers. And he's like, you need to get him here. And uh, whenever we were hunting in uh, Idaho this past uh, September, I kind of had like a reinvigoration of faith in my life. Um, I grew up in a Catholic school. I, uh, I, from grade three to grade eight, I was in a Catholic school. Uh, you know, all the religion classes and, you know, going to church every, th- every Friday morning and then on Sunday. Um, it had an impact on me, but then I kind of lost my faith throughout the years just because there was some really wild shit that occurred at that school and church that kind of rubbed me the wrong way and kind of just pointed me away from it. So I was always a decent human being, but just lost faith because of the people in the church and all human beings are flawed in some way, shape, or form. And then when I was out in Idaho, I kind of had this reinvigoration because I was like, what the fuck? I have so many, I have everything a grown man could ever dream of. I am so fucking fortunate and blessed it's not even funny. Do I work hard in life? Absolutely. But it's because I'm able-bodied. It's because I can. I have three happy, healthy, beautiful children. Three of them. I have a woman that loves me. I have multiple companies that make lots of money and provide opportunity for dozens of people. What do I have to worry or bitch about? Nothing. All you got to do is show up, be you, and go to work, dude. (laughs) So I had this reinvigoration of faith and started reading the Bible and, you know, researching a little bit and seeing, like, how these things have impacted me over my life. And I came across a, a Bible verse that I really enjoyed, and it kind of met exactly with who we are as a company. It is the second book of Thessalonians, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, that states, uh, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. I was like, holy smokes. If that isn't an an embodiment of everything that we preach, I don't know what is. I never saw the verse before in my life. Never. Nothing. 
And I'm like, how, in, how crazy is it that we are who we are with this concept? If you are able-bodied, you work. You be a good motherfucker. You give back when you can. There's people that go, get into rough spots in life and you need to help them out. You know, you can't, you can't, you, the entitlement is crazy in life. They want things for things that they did not work for. And that's really what that whole section uh, means about in the Bible, talks about in the Bible is, is like, if you're able-bodied, you work, you work, you work to provide. Whenever there are people out there that need help or can't, lend your hand, give them a hand. So I thought it was crazy. So we made, we made this shirt. Uh, that has it, that uh, Bible verse on the front, and then the actual verse, the saying on the back of the shirt. And we did it because that is our charity shirt for this. So 100% of the profits from that t-shirt will be donated to the My360 Project. So the se then the next part of it is, is uh, like we said, we put our money where our mouth is. We do what we can to help out and donate, and do cool things in the community. But... Uh, Zach was pretty adamant about uh, me experiencing what this is. Mm -hmm. So on April 25th, I will be going down to Mexico with the My360 Project, with Zach Owens, and with Ryan Osbach. Those, us three go hunting once a year together. We get together. It's a tradition. So the three of us are getting together to go down and do the mission work in Mexico. We're doing that April 25th for four days. Um, so ev you, if there's nothing you guys ever purchase from us, Purchase the shirt. 100% of the profits go to that, and it's going to be us actually doing it together. Yeah. Uh, I expect it to be something that is going to melt me. Mm -hmm. Zach told me it, you will not come back the same person. It's going to change how you look at life and what you have. He's like, you're a pretty insightful guy already. He's like, but this is going to hit you hard. And uh, he was adamant about making sure that um, we take lots of pictures and show what this is. And there's people that feel indifferent about like showing charity work. And I said, Zach, I don't know how I feel about that. And he said, Seth, he's like, you have a platform. He's like, and I understand where people come from about doing these things. He's like, but people need to know that this exists. They need to know that this is real. They need to know that there are people in this world, children in this world that don't have shoes. He's like, you're, there's going to be a line of 100 kids that don't have shoes. And you're going to wash their feet and put shoes on them. He's like, that'll change how you kind of view you putting shoes on your feet in the morning. And uh, he's like, people need to see this. They need to know this. He's like, so don't feel bad. Don't think like that. He's like, and you, you're not doing that. You're, you're, you're coming from a good place. Mm -hmm. I, we, everyone knows who you are. We, we need to get this project bigger because it, people need to understand that it's bigger than just you. And, and he said, and you doing this, he's like, once you do it based on the type of person you are, he's like, you're going to do it again. And you'll go and you'll involve more people. He's like, I know you will. That's how I got involved. Mm -hmm. He's like, I knew it would be good for me. And, uh, so, uh, it's going to be crazy. And if you guys don't buy anything from us, perfectly fine. If you want to donate a couple bucks, two bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, if you want to make a bigger donation or be a part of it in a bigger way, reach out, let us know. We'll have the link. Uh, we'll be posting about it in the release in the blog. We'll be posting about it in YouTube videos. We'll be posting about it all through Instagram stories and everything. So uh, the shirt um, is 100% of the profits go to the charity. And then if you guys want to make extra donations, everything counts because we're doing it in Mexico. And then Zach is also traveling to Africa later this year and doing it over there where he said it is much more intense. And these are different places. Yeah. So um, it's always meant a lot to us internally. We take a lot of pride in what you guys have all made happen for families um, through these charity things that we have done because it's helping people that don't have the same opportunities or need a help, need a hand at some point. And let me tell you that everything that you guys have done has made a massive impact on these people. It is life changing. And again, if it's just one T-shirt supporting the companies, we do a whole lot of good with with what you guys support here. It's not a facade. It's not a joke. This isn't. It's it's much bigger than any one individual. It's it's. Uh, 
it's incredible. So, uh, like I said, if you don't buy anything and you can donate two bucks, that two bucks will will be put to use. Um, Ten bucks, hundred bucks, whatever. But we figured it'd be a cool way for a shirt with a with a with a Bible verse that uh, that I can't believe that I've never heard of it or seen it before in my life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, very 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 cool. <clears throat> and if you're somebody that kind of feels indifferent about the Bible or faith or anything like that, because there are those people, it's not something that I'm telling you to be a Bible thumper. Mm-hmm. Because for years I was, I was in a different headspace and didn't know how I felt about my faith or religion. Um, but people are flawed. Human beings are flawed. We are. That's part of us. Uh, and with when it comes to a, a Bible verse like that. It's not that you have to become a Bible thumper and throwing the book at every single thing or every single person because you can't throw stone, stone throw stones in a glass house. Mm-hmm. We all have things that we're not proud of that we may have done in the past. It's just somewhere to start. Yep. It's somewhere to maybe kind of dip your toe in and kind of read something or, or, or search for things that might be meaningful because a lot of things and a lot of motivation within the world comes from that book. Mm-hmm. Um, and... And you might just be able to kind of dip your toe in there and swirl it around and maybe find a few things that can kind of change your perspective on life. Look at something a little bit different. Open up your, open up your mind a little bit. Or just see things from a different perspective. And I don't know, I think it's important. You don't learn everything in a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day. You can't just read, read a, a chapter from the Bible or you know a, a, a whole section of a Bible and be like, I know exactly what that means. I know everything about it now. No, 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 no. It takes a lifetime to understand what life actually is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and it, it takes a long time to figure out who you are as a person. And you might not really understand yourself in your late teens, early 20s, or in your 30s. It might take a little bit longer for you to understand more about life and the meaning of why you're here and what your purpose is. I don't know what, I, I just know that if I wake up and be me every every day, the best version of me, some pretty great things have occurred. If I wake up and be the worst version of myself, there's been some really harsh times. The only way to know is to live in that way and then kind of be able to grow from it. So, very awesome, everyone. Please, uh, like I said, if you can, buy the shirt, support the companies. There is much more than just Bob and I. It is a, we have a pretty cool community of people here and we appreciate every single thing that you guys do here uh, to make it all possible. Yep. We will continue to produce very cool shit. Like this rain jacket <laughs> that I had nothing to do with, but say, let's make it black for Seth and put a rubber patch on. Yeah. <laughs> you and fucking Nick know exactly how to get my we're, fucking, we're get like, it all rolling. You got it, dude. Look at this. We're going to put a rubber patch on and Seth's going to be like, hey, look at the rubber patch. Yeah. Look at that. Look how cool it is. It's the first thing you did in your story. I know. I love it. <laughs> and then like the starter jacket pocket, like, oh man, kangaroo pocket, like old starter jackets. Yep. It's black. It's roomy. Seth's going to wear this everywhere. Wait till he gets it. Yep. Yep. It, it's it's very cool. So everyone, thank you for all the support. Make sure that you're using athlete codes or demo crew codes to get your discounts on the company and support those people so that they get the commissions and reap some benefits from it as well. Continue to put foot traffic in all the stores that support Axe and Sledge Supplements because they are meaningful parts of their community as well, doing the same things that we're doing here. So continue to be good motherfuckers. Let your woman know that you love her and have a wonderful day. Yeah.